Hi, welcome to Everbox Guitar Tuition. So I've got another classic album inspection for you today. This is a 10th anniversary, so I've never done a 10th anniversary before, and I'll probably never do one again. I think uh, it's too soon to call it with things like that. Uh, and often on these uh, videos, I just, um, you know, so I'm just picking an album I just like, you know, that's meant something to me in my life. But um, a bit of a sad one today because it's the last Van Halen album while Eddie Van Halen was alive with David Lee Roth, uh, Alex, and um, obviously Wolfgang on bass, and it's um, from February the 7th, 2012, a different kind of truth. Um, so I can't sort of, this is probably the last time I got really excited about an album coming out, I've got to confess, maybe apart from Firepower by Jesus Priest, I just, uh, you know, I've been for a period in, starting in 2000 really, where I was really getting back in to listening, checking out uh, bands, um, listening to classic metal, which was going back, into the 90s because I hated 90s music um, and this was kind of in, in this period where ACDC had been back Metallica the Death Magnetic not I mean Metallica Priest had come back Maiden had come back with Bruce Bands Like The Darkness had got successful uh, and there was quite a lot of interesting classic rock and this was like the very end of it I think Van Halen if they'd released this album in 2007 I think they'd have done better what surprises me with this is when you check out how many YouTube vids the uh, hits they've got of this and so on. Uh, the younger people, I just don't think, realise how important this band was. But um, what's the album like? Uh, aside from it, it was great just to have it back. Uh, I still think this is a really solid record. I still think this was the best record we could hope for from the band. I think there's a couple of moves they could have done which have got it better. The sad thing is, is if they'd Eddie Van Halen had lived, uh, if they could have done another album, say from, you know, started working on that 2015, 2016, uh, and another one, you know, I think eventually you would have got a more definitive thing. I think with this album, the reason they uh, went back to old tracks is about seven tracks on this that use old riffs, and there's five I recognised um, from the Simmons demos. Um, I think it was to get their confidence. I think they were probably sitting there, well, what do we do? Well, how do you make uh, a Van Halen record with David Roth when you've not made one since 1984? Uh, so I think uh, they've probably got to go with management and a record coming. I think it was a good move. I think one of the problems with the opening track they released off it, Tattoo, a track I like, I think the record company probably felt they've got to have a track with keyboards on. It's the only track with a little bit of keyboards on. And it's not like the other tracks on the album. And I think it was a mistake to release this as the first track. Um, I like the track and it's catchy. I think it's got a great guitar solo. Um, but um, uh, they should have gone with the next track, She's the Woman. Um, uh, which is an old track off the Simmons demos. But uh, it kicks ass. It's got that Van Halen 1, Van Halen 2 sound. Um, uh, you know, it's such a good track and it's amazing it didn't make an arm, but it shows the quality of those early Van Halen arms. But it's short as well, 2 minutes 57, um, Tattoo's 4.43. So just one of the longer tracks on actually just looking, Tattoo is the second longest track. Um, so like a lot of Van Halen albums, this has short tracks. It's got 13 tracks, it's 50 minutes and 12 seconds long, so way longer than any other David Roth album. But... Um, it has, like say, 13 tracks. Typically, Van Halen albums would have seven, eight tracks in an instrumental. Um, um, and even if this had 10 tracks, you know, uh, it would still be kind of late 30 minutes, so it would still be longer. But I love She's the Woman, and that I just, every time I listen to the album, I enjoy Tattoo, but I think Tattoo should have come in like track four or five. Um, so we'll look at that. But She's the Woman's great. Uh, Eddie's guitar sounds really good. I think on this album, I think there's too much gain on the guitars. That's the first thing. And I think it was recorded and mixed and mastered in an era where people were still downloading from iTunes and listening on shitty computer speakers. It was before um, uh, Spotify and streaming flak files. So the problem is it has an over-egged bass. And maybe Eddie Van Halen wanted to push Wolfie's bass in the mix. Wolfie does a really good job. And that has to be said. He does a good job on the backing vocals. It's not the same as Michael Landy, but he's, we know he's really good. Um, but um, the production of John Shanks, I think that's something that could have been better. Less gain on the guitars. Just round the bass off a bit. Master it a little, not as aggressively. Um, and you get some extra out of it. But it was, like I say, it's in that period you listen to a lot of albums like White Snake albums. You know, Good To Be Bad and Forevermore. There's way too much bottom end on his arms, but it's because... People didn't know how our listening habits were going to go. 
track three, you and your blues, three forty four again. I'm gonna listen to the album again. Uh, really liked it. You know, I must have listened to this album about twenty times when it first came out. That first few weeks was just frenzy, and then after that, I would put it on sporadically. And sometimes it was better than others. When I listened to it recently, it was like actually, yeah, I was really enjoying it. But you and your blues, really good track. I think on this, you notice Roth's lost his middle range. So there's this weird yelp. Kind of, he's got his low range, then there's no mid, and then he's got these high notes that are kind of higher than he's sung in the past. Um, I think um, me, we, me, my, me Wise Magic, um, you know, you can hear that already on that track, going back to 96. Then you got Chinatown. Um, I really like this track. I probably don't like it as much as you used to, but um, you can hear Alex is still really on it on this um, frenzied... Um, you know, frenzied to double kicks song through his fifteen. I think the solo's a bit disappointing on this. I think I think on this album it's fair to say that Eddie's lost a bit of touch on some of his solos. And I think this one he just kinda of does a tapping thing which feels not very creative. Um but like I say Tattoo's got a great solo. Um She's a Woman, Uni Blue are solid solos. Next up's Blood and Fire. This is kind of poppy track, uh, kind of diver down vibe. Um, 1984 maybe I really like this track it's 4 minutes 27 so this is the the um, third longest track um, you know good bullet head this is two and a half minutes straight ahead rocker women and children first kind of vibe sorry itchy today um, uh, good yeah again this is a reworked old track um, uh, I think I'm not sure if that's going back to the t original Ted Templeton demos it's not in the Simmons one I've got um, but I like this track uh, because it just rocks on. I really like um, uh, if you're going my way, you're going the wrong way or whatever. Dave Lee Roth's, you know, he's doing some really good lyrics on this album. You know, he reworked the lyrics. Uh, he doesn't get enough credit as lyrics. Um, you know, you're facing the wrong way. I can't remember the line, but I really I really like that. It's something that stands out from this track. Then you've got As Is. Uh, Hold on, I've got me times wrong. It's 448. This is the, um, this is the second longest track, not, not Tattoo. Um, but this one, uh, really heavy. I think Eddie might be playing like a B kind of tuning. Uh, this is where you really hear how much gain there is on the guitars. You know, there's probably three times or certainly twice as much gain as is on, you know, those early classic Van Halen albums. And just when I'm listening to it, it feels like the gain's on 10 or something, you know, and you just think, well, you know, if you put it on seven, you'd still have more hair and an evolution of that sound. But that's just my, my take. Uh, again, this track, it's kind of up-tempo. I used to like this track more. It's got a really cool ending with some kind of delayed guitars, which I like. I like, I like what Eddie does with the guitars on this. I probably don't um, like it as much as it used to be. It's still an easy 6 out of 10. I, sh I should say on this record, there's not a bad track on it. Some tracks are like, yeah, that's great. Some tracks are kind of 6 out of 10 tracks. Um, you know. Next up's Honey Baby, Sweetie Doll. This is very sort of fair warning, women and children first. Um, I think this is one of the tracks where Eddie he knocks it out of the park. He uses a whammy pedal, uh, but in a really creative way that separates him from guys like Tom Morello and Satriani who've used them in the past. Um, quite dark, quite a dark lyric. Um, J.B. Roth almost doing that talking thing. Uh, really cool, quite quite aggressive to listen to with all the crazy effects. Again, I probably like this track more in the past. Um, like I say, other tracks were kind of revealing themselves more on this listen. Um, but it's a cool track, definitely. Next up's a Trouble with Never. This uses Wah Wah. It's a bit Hendrixy, funky, something like the band never. The band, sorry, the band always had a great groove about them. And this track grooves, but it grooves in a kind of Hendrixy vibe that they never did before. Um, really good section. It breaks down in the middle, and um, Deadly Roth does some really cool ton of spoken word stuff. That I really like. So again, this was a track I was kind of enjoying more. This always used to be the track I couldn't get into, but on recent listen, I was like, yeah, it's got some cool stuff. Uh, and then I think the album finishes really strongly. Um, Out of Space, 254. I think this is where the rhythm guitars are its strongest. Um, Eddie does the opening riff and the clarity on his phrasing on the kind of inversions is really cool. Um, I like the lyric, you know, aliens don't come to Earth because we're out of space. Again, Debbie Ross kind of adapted the lyrics, I think. Um, uh, this is not changed much from the Simmons demos. Um, quite a nice lead break. Uh, it's a fun track. Um, where would it fit in? Kind of Van Halen 1 heaviness, but Van Halen 2 popness. Uh, then you got Stay Frosty. This is just over four minutes. This is the Ice Cream Man 
sort of track, full bug type of track. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I really like it. It's, it's not Ice Cream Man, but it's it's cool. It's kind of touching bass with that sound. I've obviously written this track um, with that in mind. Uh, then you've got two tracks on the Sims demos, Big River and Beach Working. Big River's probably got the best solo uh, on the album. He does a really nice tapping passage. It's really melodic. Um, uh, I like um, the, you know, it's got a pumping quarter notes on the bass. Uh, it's got a nice mix this track. Um, uh, really cool, kind of nice delayed guitar melody at the end on the fade out. Um, it's quite cool, it's got a fade out as well, which is, um, you know, quite a 1970s, 1980s thing to do. And then Beats Working, uh, this is a really catchy track. Um, uh, I really like it, really like the chorus. Nice riff. Uh, again, it's from those Simmons demos. It's kind of weird. Them using those tracks, he's almost going, well, these tracks weren't good enough to make those early Halen albums, but, you know, they're good enough to kind of do what we want to do now. Um, and it kind of fades off with some feedback. So this is the only track that's over five minutes. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was recorded at Henson Studios and then 5150 Studio. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it's not a great record, but it's a good record. Um, does it have any truly great Van Halen tracks? I kind of feel like She's a Woman's kind of, you know, got that vibe where it could be on any of those uh, first six Van Halen albums. But you've got to remember these guys hadn't made any new music since 1996. They hadn't made an album since 1984. They hadn't made an album since uh, Van Halen 3. Um, you know, the other lot. What, what, what year was that again? I kind of block that out of my mind because it's so bad. 1998. So all this stuff has been recorded in 2011. So, you know, for me, when this came out, and I still feel this, it was the best we could, you know, we could hope for. It was better than I expected. And, you know, they did, they'd done a tour before that in 2728, I think. Maybe then some, some other dates, 2910. Then they worked on this album. They went on tour for it. There were appearances on, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, stuff like that. Um, and we sold pretty well. Its first year of release, or back about the back end of twenty twelve, it sold four hundred ten thousand copies. Um, you know, it was pushing gold. Um, I still feel it would have done better, and it would have got more traction, like Journey got with the Revelations album, or ACDC with Black Ice or Black Sabbath thirteen, if they'd had released the right cut off the bat. But there's a part of me that feels that younger, the younger generation forgot Van Halen, um, not our generation, but. Uh, I feel like, you know, young kids got on board with ACDC, Iron Maiden, Comebacks and Black Sabbath. Van Halen were more of an American uh, institution, so it didn't travel like it is. I mean, it must have sold a million copies worldwide or certainly 700,000, but a better single would have helped it. Um, maybe maybe trimming a couple of tracks, maybe getting a mix of a difference, but obviously what happened was Eddie Van Halen had that illness, didn't he? Was it diverticulitis or some of his intestines? So that put him out of action. Then they were, were doing some Vegas dates and they were doing a tour of 12, 2015, just the US. I hope they'd come over and do, you know, dates in the UK. But obviously Eddie Van Halen must have got his diagnosis somewhere after that. Maybe it was planned for an album, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. Um, I get the impression Wolfie kind of kicked their ass to do this. And maybe, maybe they weren't fussed about making more music. I'm sure Roth would have, but there's still that thing in the back of my mind that Roth, Van Halen, they came to an accord um, and they got on okay, but I don't think Alex and Roth ever saw eye to eye. Um, but, you know, we can, you know, in the mind, you know, in another universe, if anyone Halen's health had held out, you know, maybe we would have got another album and they would have had the confidence to write new material um, or more new material and we would have got an even better album but as a final album of Van Halen as a final album of the Daily Roth era or coming back to Daily Roth era I still think this is on a bad day it's a, it's a 7 out of 10 on a good day it's an 8, 8 and a half um, uh, and I'm, I'm still enjoy listening to it and I really enjoyed my listen recently um, uh, but um, you know uh, that's sad Van Halen uh, left us We'll always miss him, uh, but um, you know, there's some nice touches on his arm that remind us what a great player he was. So, 10 years old today, that's really flown by, hasn't it? Um, different kind of truth, Van Halen's final album. Thanks very much for checking it out.